Hey everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's coverage. Day one, HPE Discover 2023. Lisa Martin and Dave Vellante coming to you live from Venetian Expo. Dave, this is day one of our coverage. We've had some, there was a lot of news this morning. A lot, you said last year, I think you were talking about HPE and its partner ecosystem and kind of the, some of the beefiness they needed to do. We've got a partner up next who was lauded on stage this morning by Antonio. I think, I think Lisa, the strong ecosystem is the hallmark of any cloud company, you know, not just the public cloud companies, but the, the hybrid cloud companies as well. So yeah, I think that's really important. I agree. We've got two guests from Emphasis joining us next. Two alumni, I should say. Uma Lakshmipathy is here, SVP and Regional Head EMEA, Cloud Infrastructure and Security Services at Emphasis, and Saju Sankaran Kati, the CTO, Cloud Advisory SP, SVP Emphasis. Guys, it's great to have you. I last talked to you in person two years ago. Great to see you back in person. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, Uma Shankar, I run the cloud and infrastructure business, and uh, it's great to be back in Discover, and uh, good conversations as, as usual. Absolutely, as usual. Saju, give us a little bit of background about you. So thank you, and again, um, and, and, and thank you for having us back here. Um, so I, I'm, I'm with the company for the last 20 years. Um, I look at the strategy, the technology strategy for um, the cloud and infrastructure business. Um, I also um, head the hybrid cloud business for us uh, globally, and um, we are running some very large transformation on cloud for some of our um, some marquee customers across the world. Um, apart from that, I also own two platforms. Uh, basically, uh, the platform is is something where we deliver our services through, and um, and we'll talk more about our platform, you know, while we talk um, through 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 the interview today. Excellent, Uma. Lead us off. Give us some background of the cloud infrastructure and security business unit at Emphasis. How are cloud solutions enabling and powering organizations to transform, grow their businesses? What's that backstory? The story for us uh, started about uh, 20 years back when we decided as a company that we would go into the infrastructure business. Uh, looking back, it's been a great growth story. A story about 30% year-on-year growth from the time we started this business. Uh, and all economies, whether you talk about geographies in North America, whether geographies in Europe, Middle East, Africa, or the Asia Pacific, I think it's been an all-rounded growth for us uh, in this business. Uh, we, we kind of, uh, have different solution set offerings across various market segments. Uh, the growth story has been great. It's uh, fueled the economies of all markets for us. Uh, of course, we have a great platform called COBOL. We'll be talking about it. Uh, but most importantly, I think we've tried to help all segments, enterprise segments, and large clients uh, deliver programs for them. Digital transformation has been a central theme for all these clients. Uh, and we've been a digital first company, a cloud first company. Uh, five, five to 10 years back, we took a cloud narrative that we're going to be hybrid. And today you can see uh, everybody's talking hybrid. Yes. Uh, and and that's, that's the story behind uh, our cloud and infrastructure work. Great marquee of clients across all industry segments, whether it's banking, whether it's finance, whether it's telecom, whether it's, and we have a good plethora of uh, what I would call as uh, enterprise client sets that we work on at uh, different levels of transformation. That's interesting that you're seeing consistency across the board like that. I mean, even HPE in its last quarter said, yeah, North America a little, little soft. I mean, and because that's, we watch the news in North America and interest rates are going up and there's going to be a recession and everybody goes, oh, hold on, but you're not seeing that. So what, to what do you attribute that consistency? See, I think uh, uh, the IT companies in general uh, did well in the COVID era. Uh, yeah. uh, in the sense that you know people are getting to work from home, so we have to enable them to work from home. We have to put secure systems so that you know people can work securely from home and have their applications secured. Uh, we continue to do business because we are in the infrastructure world, so we had to add the basics working for many of our clients. So I think we saw a lot of uh, digital enablement that happened for our clients as part of this digital transformation that they did, we did for these clients. And um, now we're seeing the, the entire fruits of that, uh, of the, what we did, of the seeds that we sow in the COVID area, and we helped clients come through that digital transformation. So we are now seeing the whole momentum of moving into the next uh, business models because uh, companies have learned to survive, companies want to now thrive. 
Mm. So I think uh, that's really helping the agenda for digital transformation. And uh, that's, that's uh, been the mantra of success, I would say. Sasha, can you talk a little bit about some of the emerging and current technologies that fall under Cobalt, Cobalt 2.0? What, what's going on there? Sure, I think um, it's a great question, and Omar touched upon Cobalt. You know, let, me, let me quickly introduce what is Cobalt, right? You know, Cobalt is a set of services, solutions, and platforms, you know, which is uh, which basically to help customers accelerate their journey to cloud. Right? This is something what we launched way back in 2020. And uh, if you look at it today, we have around 35,000 um, assets around Cobalt um, and around 300 plus um, industry blueprints, what we have developed as a part of these offerings. Now, fast forward into 2023. Now, when we look at um, the, the, the associated technologies around cloud, you know, which is, one is data, the second is AI, third is AR, VR, um, and, and fourth is IoT, fifth is 5G. So what we are seeing is the cloud and associated technologies, they are actually making a huge impact into our, um, the so-called our businesses, right? And it's all about solving the problem of cloud and these associated technologies for the industry problems whatever our customers are facing. And that's where we have actually brought in the, 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 the uh, Cobalt 2.0. So the Cobalt 2.0 is all about focusing on these, developing these industry solutions. Now, if you look at, uh, when I say the industry solutions, you know, if you look at some of the industries what we work with, if you go to a banking customer, you know, um, and the banking customer, and the, 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 the whole question to us is, how can I make uh, my solutions more secure, right? Um, and if I go to a retailer, uh, it's all about um, how can I make my customer experience more, um, more better? And how can I have smart stores which can actually improve my sales? And if I go to some of my manufacturing customers, you know, their question is more about how can I have a smart factory which can actually improve my productivity? So now, when we look at all of these use cases, and when we start applying these technologies, right, which is cloud and these associated technologies, that's where we started creating these industry blueprints and industry platforms, which can actually help our customers to, uh, to drive transformation on their business. I'll give you some of the examples. You know, one is, um, one of our solutions is around, um, uh, it's, it's, um, uh, uh, it, it's, it's Helix, right? You know, it's a, it's a platform what we have built. It's an AI-first, people-centric, digital care platform, right? Whatever we have built for our customers. The second one is Energy as a Service. You know, uh, Energy as a Service, it's a platform for the industries and cities, basically to, um, it, it, it is basically to improve the energy efficiency of their infrastructure, right? And how do we measure the energy efficiency and how do we actually report it and how do we ensure that um, this, their goals around the decarbonization can be met? So these are some of the industry problems what we are solving as a part of our Cobalt 2.0 offering. And I think, uh, just to add to what Sajwa, I think he, he give a great explanation to how we've launched Cobalt. It's our marketing brand, and it's the first marketing brand to be launched by a system integrator. Uh, and the, and just to add to all these technologies and the solution offerings that Saju talked about, I think the most important and one of the most important aspects of Cobalt has been to build an ecosystem of people being able to work and get this access to this platform. It's not only employees, it's the ecosystem of partners like HP, partners like uh, universities, and you know the startups. So the whole community coming in and helping develop this platform. And it's just not a PR, just an Infosys platform, but it's a platform for the ecosystem. And that's a great point. It's for the ecosystem, it's for the community, and the community together makes it better together, right, with all this collaboration that's going on. And, and it brings its experiences to us. Yes. So how do you um, make sure that that platform can evolve uh, as technologies change, uh, you know, Obviously, generative AI is the, the next new thing, even though it's been around for a while. Is that, is that an architecture that you, you sort of build into Cobalt? Is it, um, is it the partnerships that you form that allow you to advance that over time? So I'll start with it and probably I'll ask Saji to add on, but um, it's kind of an open platform. 
you right? It's it's not a closed sourced platform, uh, and we're not trying to use this to subscription and make make this into a revenue perspective. What we are trying to use the COBOL is to enable the 200 plus thousand Infoceans to be able to access ready blueprints that they can take to their clients when the clients want to do a certain level of commoditization, customization, et cetera. We had, we had all of these assets, but they were in islands within the organization. So we bought Cobalt brings all of this into a central theme. And at the same time, I, I've talked about how Cobalt is working with the ecosystem of partners, ecosystem of, of universities, ecosystem of startups. And uh, we have some great examples there. We worked uh, in the COVID time, um, uh, we had a bank in Norway, and uh, they were given a very big order from Amazon to deliver to the home. And they didn't have the ability of their IT systems to cater to that capability because it was the volume was so high in a short period of time. So uh, they came to us uh, with this problem and uh, we looked at Cobalt and we looked at the solutions that we have done with them, but we were not very sure whether this would be able to scale. So we took it back to a, a university and we asked them to check if the solution that we did can take that scale. So, Technically, the solution that came was not an emphasis solution, but solution driven through the COBOL framework uh, to deliver to a business challenge, to deliver Amazon in Norway through the post office. Now, you can, you can know what the names of the clients are, but <laughs> this is the story. So just to add to what um, Uma said, right, and to answer your, um, one part of your question, David, you know, in terms of, um, um, how the, the technology, the evolving technology landscape is helping us in terms of um, uh, building up on this, um, on the COBOL, right? One is, Uma talked about the community part of it, right? Now we have, we, have, we have the community which is focused on four areas. One is definitely in terms of building knowledge assets. And these knowledge assets are basically the foundation of everything what we build. So as and when we have new sets of technologies coming in, these are actually calibrated as knowledge assets, which comes into the community. So people who are actually contributing or, or accessing this community has access to these knowledge assets about the new technology. Now, the second comes the domain assets. Now the domain assets are nothing but the industry blueprints. Now the knowledge assets are leveraged to solve problems of industry assets right, or the domain assets. Now with that, we create technology assets, right? So these technology assets are actually built on these technologies, you know, it can be an AI technology or it's, it's leveraging uh, 5G or leveraging IoT. So if you look at it, and then we, we have something called platform assets. So all of these four assets, all together, it's, um, when you, when you it's, it's nothing but, um, it's, like, uh, uh, it's, it's like where you start building right from the technology, the knowledge to technology, knowledge to domain and to technology. It's like a Lego blocks, right? Different Lego blocks coming together. And that's how we are able to sustain this. So with new technologies getting added, knowledge assets gets created, it, the domain assets are being leveraged in terms of applying this technology into these domains and we could actually create the business assets. That's how we sustain this. And, and, and to reiterate uh, what Saju just said, and I talked about it, it's pretty open sourced. Yeah. So the ability for us to navigate from one technology or one platform to another platform is pretty easy because it's all open. Yeah, which gets you into the whole hybrid message, and the whole yeah. multi-cloud theme, what we call super cloud sometimes, right? Which is that cross-cloud experience, which has got to be consistent. Different from multi-cloud, which was, oh, we work on this cloud, and we work on this cloud, and we work on this cloud, but there are three separate, four separate experiences from on-prem. Now you have the edge. How, how close are we as an industry to that vision of a consistent experience across all those locations? Uh, today was a great example. I don't know uh, if you've been to the keynote, and oh, yeah. uh, Antonio talked about how Infosys helped a uh, client uh, and uh, this is a wind energy company, and uh, and uh, people would uh, think that we know when we went in, and you know it came from two companies, Siemens and Gamesa, uh, merging. So they had a huge amount of 
assets and their need of consolidation, et cetera. And that's how we went in with the approach. And uh, we landed with a problem that, you know, uh, we had these windmills. And they had the, and Gamesha was very popular for building windmills in the sea. And, and if you travel to London, you will see that when you cross the uh, ocean and you will find the windmills in the sea. And, and that's built by Gamesa. So the challenge for us is, was to connect that edge to the uh, data centers in Frankfurt. So, uh, and, and the amount of data these windmills do send is significant. Yeah. And, and three years back this was, and we created an edge story along with HPE uh, and Aruba at that time, and it was pretty popular uh, for the first time. Of course, it took us three years to get to the keynote, but... Uh, <laughs> but you got there. But we got there, and, uh, and we got it from Antonio. Uh, yeah. And that, that's the greatest recognition of the work that we do, uh, is when, when you actually see the benefits of two organizations coming together. We have great stories like that. We have a great story in an automobile sector. We have a, we are, we are, we are consolidating a very large set of data centers and, and stuff like that. Uh, again, creating a great edge hybrid story along with HP. Uh, and I think this partnership has really collaborated well. Uh, and today we have a great 360 degree relationship uh, with HP, the great leaders, Antonio and Salil. Uh, at right at the top, and they're driving the whole governance across the organization, and today we're seeing the benefits of that success. Well, congratulations, guys, on that success, continued success with Emphasis, your partner ecosystem, and especially with HPE. We thank you so much for joining us back on theCUBE today. Discover. Thank you, Lisa, thank, thank you, Dave. Thank you, it was a great uh, talk our to you Our pleasure. Thank you. For our guests, I'm for Dave Vellante. I'm Lisa Martin, and you're watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. What's next, you ask? HPE and Veeam are going to be here talking about the continued partnership between these two juggernauts and what they're delivering customer outcomes wise. Stick around.